In this video, we're going to take a look at importing our Inventor dataset into 3ds Max and why we chose the step format. Although 3ds Max can import native Inventor files, it does come with additional intelligence that we don't really need for our VR project. And that will essentially cause us to take up more time when it comes to exporting from Inventor and also importing into 3ds Max. Also, the step format has some options that will be very useful for us when it comes to VR. Before we import our data set into 3ds Max, as we saw in the last video, we should make sure that our system units are set up correctly. So I'm going to go into Customize and then Unit Setup. And I just want to confirm that my system unit is set to, in this case, for, what we, for this project, metric. And I decided that centimeters was the essentially the resolution that I that I needed for this project. I don't need fractions of a millimeter uh, resolution for what we're working on. For the display unit, technically it could be whatever we want, but at least using the same uh, system makes sense. So since I'm using centimeters for my system unit, I should use also the metric system, but in this case I'll use meters. So we're gonna go into file import and then import, find our step file. And this is the whole reason that we chose a step file. So one, um, it gives us the option to convert the inventor body objects into meshes. So meshes are going to be lighter in 3ds Max. If you've ever worked with inventor default inventor files in 3ds Max, it can be a bit cumbersome, especially when it's very complex, like what we have with our front loader. So we want to convert these into meshes. And we can't use native inventor body objects anyways in VR. So at some point it has to be converted. Might as well do it now. The other very important option that we have is the ability to change the density of this mesh. So the resolution from something that's higher, which will look closer to the original object, but be again heavier for 3ds Max and also going to be more difficult to get good performance in VR. So in this case, I'm going to use less. I'm going to set this as low as possible. After that, up axis, we'll leave it at Z. And for the hierarchy, um, I'm going to use layer in this case. I don't want everything flattened into one object, um, but I don't want to use the assembly grouping that we had in Inventor. So I'm just going to use layer. And we go ahead and hit import. And through the magic of television, our part is now imported. It actually didn't take that long, but I decided it's probably best just to cut out that loading part to save time. Um, the last thing that we want to do is just confirm that this came in at the correct scale, the correct size. And the way we do that is select everything, which it already is, but just in case, I'm going to just drag select a box around this, go into the utilities tab, and then click on measure, which is right there. And you can see that in this case, it is coming in at the right size, 7.8, 2.5, 3.4. Um, in case you're wondering, where is it coming up with these three values? Um, even though a front loader is much more complex than that when it comes to measurements, the dimensions that we see here are the dimensions of what we call the bounding box. Now that means if we were to create a box that perfectly fits the selection, it would be this size that we see here. So in this case, it is correct. Now, it should always actually import at the correct scale, regardless of the units that we've used. What was important is that we don't change the units after that it's important, uh, not important, imported, excuse me. Um, but it's always a good idea to check anyways.